You know, I've always wanted a quality to streaming that no one else has really ever done before. It's always been something where someone sets up their streams and it's generally looked normal. Webcam, gameplay, all that kind of stuff. I've always strived to do something a little more cinematic. Why can't it be that? Taking all the years of expertise that I have in the film industry, I thought, what's another way that I could push things a little bit more forward to a more of a cinematic kind of stream? Why can't I take the film industry and put it into streaming even more than I already have. You know, back in 2016, I introduced a 4K cinematic mirrorless camera, the Sony a7S, to streaming. No one had really been doing it at that point. It was more just people setting up their webcams. But this is a way that I thought I could improve and get better quality on streaming, because why not? Now trying to come up with new ideas and new concepts in terms of uh, streams has always been something that I've strived for. Moving cameras, 4K, cinematic quality lenses. Now, I wanted to figure out a new way to bring something new to the table. Now movies have been around for years. Years and years and years. And one thing I've always strived for in trying to make my streams look like are films. I've always tried to make my streams feel like a film. And the way that I found to do that today it's by going ultra wide and going that classic movie aspect ratio, the anamorphic look, the 2 4 0 to 1 aspect ratio. Now, if you've ever seen a James Bond movie, you've kind of known what that widescreen aspect ratio looks like. It's giant, it's big, it feels larger than life. There's something about this ultra wide 2 4 0 anamorphic aspect ratio that just looks really cool. The conventional way of people streaming and viewing content in their homes has always been 16 by 9. These monitors. I mean, minus, minus this guy here. It's always been 16 by 9. What if we just make it a little bit more cinematic and adding those, uh, those bars in there? Well, that's one way to do it, but then now you got these baked in black bars on your screen and if you're viewing on something like an ultra wide monitor here, like I got, you're gonna have even more black bars all over your screen and I, I don't think anybody wants that. If you're viewing here on a uh, on an ultra wide monitor, you end up getting a cropped image here in which you're wasting all this extra space. Now, instead of just adding these black bars to my stream, I just thought, why don't I just stream directly in that aspect ratio? So now when I'm streaming, I'm getting the full display image of my stream in an ultra wide format. This is going to take my cinematic quality content to the next level. So if you're ever thinking about doing something like this, it's really simple but it's gonna come down to whether you and your viewers want this. Now, not everybody is gonna enjoy this widescreen aspect ratio. Sure, it looks good on paper. Sure, it looks good every now and then, but do you want a full stream of it? You're gonna have to come down to that conclusion on your own. For me, I think this adds a level of cinematic viewing that is unmatched in any other streams I've ever seen on this platform or any other. Now, this is only gonna work on YouTube, you can do it on Twitch, but you're gonna have these black bars on there. And maybe that's cinematic for you. But for me, I wanted an ultra wide 235 or 240 aspect ratio to my streams. I tried it and I got it to work. And oh boy, it looks so much better. Setting something like this up in OBS is super easy. You just gotta change your canvas. Now when it comes to actually streaming this ultra wide image, you're gonna wanna make sure that you have an extra amount of bitrate to go ahead and compensate for the extra resolution that you're adding to your streams. Both on the left and the right side of your screens, it's no longer a 16 by 9 image, so you gotta give it more bitrate to compensate for the extra bit of resolution, or you risk getting a little pixelated. Now, all you need here is OBS on your computer, laptop, or whatever you have. Now, it's very easy to install, it's free, and just get it downloaded so you can start streaming today. Now, once you actually open up OBS, all you're gonna need to do is go ahead and go to your canvas. That's gonna be in your settings. So you go to your settings, you go to your canvas, you're gonna change that canvas to a custom canvas. Normally you have this little drop down menu, it's gonna give you a bunch of presets, but what some people don't know, you can actually just type directly into the canvas. So in this case, for this ultra wide look, I'm doing 3440 by 1440. So that's gonna be the ultra wide monitor. That's the resolution of my monitor. So I thought, why not make that the aspect ratio of 
A, this uh, video, and B, the stream. So, quick sidebar here. If you actually enjoy how this is sounding, I'm actually using this thing from Movo. It's these little wireless lavaliers that actually go inside this little case that it just charges up uh, the product. And this is not a sponsored thing, but I just wanted to let you guys know what I'm actually using here for audio. I actually have two different mics on me. This thing comes with, well, you can get a couple different options, but it comes with two transmitters as well as one receiver. So. Right now, I have two transmitters on my body as well as a receiver on my Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 6K. So, right now, over here, this is actually what it sounds like through the little wired lavalier mic, as well as this side is what is recorded directly to these little devices themselves. Now, if you're someone like me and you don't want a lot of audio hassle and whatnot, you can simply take this thing and use it as its own personal microphone. So, if this is something you like and you like the way this sounds, maybe this is something you could use. But for me, I just want to give you guys both options and have them both on my person at the same time. Nice little case right here to go ahead and uh, store your, your devices as well as it'll charge it for you. So you charge this guy, this charges your devices, or you just plug it in and charge them all at the same time, whatever you need. It's pretty handy. Now these mics actually come with a lot of good little goodies and whatnot. A, you get a little weighted adapter. You also get the little, you know, the classic lavalier wires and whatnot to go ahead and run it through the shirt and keep it all nice and hidden, you know, much like a news interview. And then you also got these guys right here that simply just click on. Now these click on ones are pretty nice and they do come with little furry things you can add on here to really, you know, if it's windy outside, you can go ahead and get a nice sounding uh, audio out of this thing. But it's great to be able to take one of these guys and just simply clip it where you want and you're good to go. And you know, you got this in the frame, but it's not that big of a deal and it's not that huge of a distraction. Now they actually come in multiple different variants here. You can get like a single transmitter as well as a, a, a dual transmitter and you can do lots of different things. You can get specific ones catered to a film camera, much like I got here, or you can do something as simple as connecting it to your phone. It's pretty great. So if you are interested in these guys, it'll cost you anywhere between about 50 to $200, depending on how many receivers, transmitters you want, mini versus, you know, professional, and they have a bunch of different options. Now these things go a fairly long distance. I'm talking like a block in terms of a city or something like that. So, you know, go check it out, man. Go on their, uh, their website, check all those specifications that you might need to cater towards whatever kind of production you're doing, whether that's a podcast or a thing like this. Now, when it comes to adapting your 16 by nine streams to ultra wide streams, it's not just the click of a button by switching your canvas, you're gonna have to do a lot more than that. Now to do so, you're gonna have to create these things called scene nests. Now, nested scenes basically are a scene that you put inside of other scenes as a source. So what I mean by that is when you go ahead and create yourself a scene, you can put things in there like your gameplay, like your camera, like all that kind of stuff. But normally when you put those into each and every single scene, you gotta re adjust, retune, and remake everything from scratch. You gotta, you know, stretch things out, skew them, crop them, all that kind of stuff. But if you do it ahead of time all in one scene and then implement that scene in your other scenes as a nested scene, it's much easier. Take my gameplay, for example. Now, I have a capture card, Naver Media Live Gamer 4K. That thing will accept a nice 3440 by 1440p image. Now, to do this, I need to set my capture card the, in the device properties to 3440 by 1440p. Now when I did this, I don't know why, but my capture card squished the image and it added these black bars to it. Very strange. But what I had to do is I had to de-squeeze it. Once I de-squeezed it, I realized, oh man, I'm gonna have to do this in every single scene that I have my gameplay in. But I found a trick by using my scene nesting. I can take that gameplay, stretch it just in the nested scene. Now when I add that nested scene to my other gameplay scenes, it's already de-squeezed. Nested scenes are huge. I highly recommend you do it. It makes life so much easier, trust me. Now the same rule applies for alerts and everything else. So if you got alerts and you know, you're know you constantly having to battle where they're gonna be and position them, just put them all in an empty scene, position it where you want, and then just apply those alerts or notifications or browser sources to other scenes. It's really simple and really effective. Now when it comes to gameplay, it's fantastic. I don't know if you've ever played on an ultra wide monitor, but oh boy, it is. Not only does it feel cinematic and ultra widescreen, but it looks and feels cinematic and ultra widescreen. It's really fun and it's, it's engaging for your audience. It's something that you maybe have never seen before, especially with streams. Now, some of the things that didn't work 
or stingers. When you make a stinger, it's usually 16 by nine. Now, if you change your canvas size, if it's 16 by nine, you're fine. It'll scale to whatever you need. But as soon as I went to an ultra widescreen aspect ratio, it stretched all my stingers out. Now, the only way to really combat this is to create an actual stinger with that correct aspect ratio. You're gonna have to do it. You can't just in OBS scale up your stingers. They're already set into one spot and one place and you can't, you can't change it. So you will have to go ahead and take your stingers and bring them into an editing software and scale them to the right resolution or crop them and then export them and use them again. So just keep that in mind. If you ever do want to do these ultra wide uh, streams, you will have to do that. With all this said and done, it's got to come down to you and your content. Is this going to fit your content? Is this going to fit your lifestyle of your types of streams and whatnot? It's going to come down to you and whether you want to do this. Don't do something just because you hear someone else is doing it. Do it because it matters for your content and matters for you as a content creator. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. I'm live here on YouTube as well as uh, on Twitch from time to time. Now, if you go over to my Twitch, I'll be streaming in regular 16 by nine. But if you come to my YouTube, you might catch me in that ultra wide aspect ratio, cinematic aspect ratio. Come by, sub to the channel, it's free. I'll catch you next time, all right? Thanks.